Hey YouTube, Rembot here. Uh, as some of you may know, I'm planning on doing a tutorial series on Shibori, which is a Japanese resist dyeing technique, and I'm going to be doing it in parts because there is a definite progression in how difficult the different types of Shibori are. And as part of doing my research for that, I ordered a actual Shibori tying tool off of a website online, and I just got it in the mail today. And this is the box right here. When I ordered it, I actually thought that it was a fabrication of the company that I ordered it from, but it wasn't. It was actually a uh, Japanese created item, as you can see, and they had imported it and were selling it in Canada, which I then had to have shipped down to me here in the US. So I was really pleased to see that it was something authentic, and uh, when it got here, I was really surprised about the type of needle on it, but I'll show you that in just a second. On the side of the box here, it shows some examples of the different types of shibori that you can do with this tool, and I'm going to explain them to you here. This is Yanagi shibori, which is willow shibori. Kumo shibori, which is... Kumo is the Japanese word for spider, and it's of course based on the fact that the pattern looks like a spider web. And then you have Kanoko Shibori, and Kanoko is fawn, and it refers to the spots that you see on the backs of baby deer. Now the type of Shibori that I'm going to be doing with this tool is actually not any one of these, and I'm going to show you a real world example of it right now. This is an Obiagi that I actually purchased in a vintage uh, Japanese shop down in the International District here in the city of Seattle. And it is an example of a type of shibori called Miura shibori. You may be thinking that it looks very similar to the Konoko shibori, which is this one, because of the very fine dots in it. But there is a very key difference between Miura shibori and Konoko shibori, and that is that Miura shibori has a texture to it. You can see when I bring it up close that the fabric is ridged. There are valleys from where the ties were made and when you flip it over you can see the peaks. Also when you lay it flat you can see how it kind of bunches up here where the ties are and it's because of the tension of the string that was held around each of these little dots to create the circular pattern. And when you do normal Konoko Shibori, which is this right here, you don't have that. It's just a flat piece of fabric. There is no uh, bubbly texture to it. There is no shrinkage. So that's one of the big differences. And Miura Shibori is incredibly difficult to do. And that's part of why I got this tool, is because there is just no way I could hand tie that many ties in such a small space without them falling apart. So let me show you this little tool. It's made of three pieces and it's designed to sit on the edge of a table and basically just be wedged in with the C-clamp here. But the needle on this... Let me see if I can even get my camera to show you. Yeah, there it is. The needle on this is very, very fine. All of my embroidery needles that I use for doing embroidery on silk are thicker than this. It's very, very tiny. Like, if you've ever been to the hospital and seen the kind of needles that they use in IVs for babies, the butterfly needles, that's about how thin this is. And when this was sent, it had a plastic cap on the end to protect it because of that. It would be very easy to damage in shipping. Now, the way that that tool is supposed to work, let's see if I can find the picture of my Shibori Bible here, uh, is that the fabric is hooked over the edge of that needle and you wrap the thread around the part that you pull up and you keep doing that over and over and over in a row until you've created your pattern and when you untie it you get one of these really beautiful ridged patterns that you see in the book here. And this is hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of knots, and it can take hours to tie them. 
And even in that example that I have here, I don't know if my webcam quality is good enough, but you can kind of see in some places some of the ties have dropped and they just aren't as dark as the others and that's because the thread has come undone. But I haven't had time to actually put together the tool and use it yet. I am hoping that I will have time to do that later this week and I can give you another update and show you exactly how it works in action. But uh, that's just a little heads up, a little preview of what I'm going to be doing in my tutorials. They'll be uh, a little bit more better arranged than this because I will be creating scripts for those and probably doing the audio afterwards. I'm just working on my webcam at home right now. The video quality will be better on those, but uh, I'm very excited to have this tool and I'm going to see what I can do with it and I'll talk to you guys later.